Well, hello and welcome to another Dev Nation Live Tech Talk. I'm super excited today. We're going to be having a lot of fun. We have our great friend, CMAC here, a guy whose name I can never actually pronounce correctly, but he's coming to us live from Sweden. He's kind of this Canadian Sweden person, right? He kind of lives in both places, but he's going to talk to us about two really cool topics. That's Argo CD and Tecton CD. And you might be thinking, well, don't those two things do the same thing? Well, he's going to explain all that and really tell us how Tecton Argo work. And he's going to answer a very key question about that. One thing I want to show you though, if you're at KubeCon this week, you might've saw our cool new shirt and I put it on today. So I'll stand up here so you can see it. And I say it's cool because it has my name on it, right? So you want a Kubernetes shirt. I will actually put the link in the chat so you guys can see how to get one of these if you want one for yourself. I bought two, of course. Uh, CMAC, we should have brought you one and had it shipped so you could have it wearing it today and we could have been like twins. Yeah? yeah I was going to say, I'll be clicking on that link, buying one immediately. It yeah, has a mirror on it. I'll get that link up, but one I want to make sure you guys are aware. Uh, so we have a bunch of you online right now, but we have a very special event starting next Tuesday. I'll add the link to the chat, but we're going to actually add a new show to the DevNation repertoire as of Tuesday. It's actually more of a talk show style, game show style. Sebi Blanc, Sebastian Blanc will be our host there. He's going to be interviewing special guests as of Tuesday next week. We're going to have Ray Singh. Ray Singh is going to be our special guest for that interview, but we're also going to play some interactive games with the audience. We're going to talk about news and noteworthy events, and of course, your live chat will be interesting to us as well, and we can interact with you from that perspective. So lots of really fun stuff happening. I'm just checking that all my streams seem to be running. It looks like I see everything actually connected up on the internet, as always. It's always a good thing if that stuff connects. But at this point, we want to hook you up with CMAC. We're going to turn it over there, and you can go ahead and start screen sharing. Thank you, Earl. Let me get started with this. You can signal if you can see my screen. Yep, it looks great. All right, fantastic. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm CMAC Sadogianfar, Product Manager at Red Hat for uh, OpenShift. Uh, focus on uh, CI/CD uh, project. So I'm going to talk to you about Argo CD and Tecton uh, and how they complement each other so well in, uh, in delivering application, the way that they solve uh, uh, the problems that the other tool doesn't and uh, cover each other gaps. So let's dive directly into it. I have a lot of uh, topics I want to cover and show you the demo as well. Uh, not to lose any cycles, uh, jumping straight on. So before I go ahead, let me explain a little bit of what I mean by continuous integration and continuous delivery. I know these, these topics are discussed a lot, but I would like to make a distinction between these two, two concepts. So when we, in the application delivery phases or from the place that a developer works, usually on their workstation, laptop, or, or desktop computer, you iteratively write code, uh, test it, run it, debug it, and when you're happy with your state of the code, you usually come into a Git repo. Uh, from this phase, uh, it, the continuous integration, from this point, continuous integration phase is started. It's about taking that change, uh, testing it, packaging the application, maybe building the image, and uh, iterate on that for every change that you make to the code or config configuration. Continuous delivery starts from the point that the release of the application is made. This release means different things for different applications. It might be the image being built, it might be the artifact being built, it might be a more official uh, and formalized release process. But after the release, whatever needs to happen till this, this application is available in, in different environments and can a third user, that will be internal users like the, the the production team, like the QA team UI, or it could be customers. That phase is continuous delivery. These two phases get mingled together a lot, but throughout today's session, I want to make a distinction and really focus on what problem exists in each of them and why Tecton and Argo together uh, address these problems much better than uh, each tool alone. So I mentioned Tecton. What is Tecton? Tecton is a a project, an uh, open source uh, project focusing on uh, declarative CI CD that is native to Kubernetes. So it introduces a number of custom resources uh, for defining your pipeline. Uh, you are familiar with uh, deployment service, ingress, and objects like that on Kubernetes. And Tecton just extend that with, the, with other type of resources that lets you define your pipeline, building upon the exact same construct and concepts and infrastructure that you're used to within the Kubernetes uh, eco, uh, ecosystem. Uh, Tecton is part of CD Foundation. It was, in fact, one of the seed projects. CD Foundation was formed as a governing body of uh, open source projects related to CI-CD to make sure that 
uh, many vendors are uh, involved or heard and these projects are uh, being built based on the best practices from all the vendors that are active within the space, Red Hat being the members in CD Foundation. And I don't think that Tekton does because you, you might be thinking that there aren't a lot of CI CD systems out there. Uh, we, we don't have a shortage of CI CD systems, uh, but some of the reasons that Tekton was born, uh, you can see that you can see them in a lot of the cloud-based CI CD. So if you're looking at uh, Travis or GitHub Actions or GitHub CI, the reason people like these systems are that um, you, you don't have a CI engine to take care of anymore. Like, most teams want to run a pipeline for delivering their application, to do a CI application, to run the test and package their application. They are not really that interested in running the CI engine and make sure that it has enough memory or storage is it backed up or not. It's just an overhead that is imposed to the teams. So with cloud-based CI systems, you get that, obviously, uh, as a part of a deal. But if you're running on, within your own infrastructure, your own Kubernetes, or maybe you're running in environments that don't have access even to internet in uh, air gap environment then you don't have access to those kind of systems take down it's focusing on solving this particular problem so you run that as an on-demand pipelines you don't have this in server to take care of on on any kubernetes is it even on on mini cube or kind if you're running locally uh, and every pipeline runs in isolated pods and containers, right? So if you're familiar with more traditional CI CD, Bamboo, Jenkins, Team CD, plugins are difficult. They're a problem. You as a first team want a certain version of a plugin, the second team another version, they are in conflict with each other or they have dependencies that conflict with each other. Take down you have the everything that you need for your pipeline is running in those pods. You don't need to uh, worry about breaking anyone else pipeline or anyone else dependency. Uh, it's portable. That's the, one of the best part of it. You can take your pipeline and run it on any platform, on any Kubernetes, including OpenShift, of course, and there's a wide set of tooling support uh, for it. Uh, there's a CLI, there are dashboards, it's within the OpenShift console, there are plugins across various editors, so you, you can keep being in the, in the area that you're developing code and interact with your pipeline directly from there. The concept that pipe that take time introduces are fairly familiar for anyone that has built a pipeline before with any tool really. So you have a pipeline that is built up in a certain units. The units are called tasks in take time and they are built up a number of steps. You basically form a graph of how these tasks should execute. And the way they execute on Kubernetes is that every task becomes a pod and you have a number of containers within those pods that represent steps. So this is immediately to get him teach you why there you, you never have a plugin problem or conflicts in the world of takedown because anything that you have in your pipeline it runs on a series of pods distributed across your Kubernetes nodes. In in that pod is only a task that is related to your pipeline is running. No one else is running there. So any image that you want to reference, you can reference it right there. Another aspect of this, uh, how this is useful is that the pipeline is running as pods exactly like how your application is running on Kubernetes as pods, which means if your application has a config map with certain information or there's a secret for connecting to the GitHub uh, or a, a container registry, image registry to deploy your application, you can reuse the same constructs in take time. It is still running as pods. You have the same container specs, so you have a fully compatible terminology and concepts uh, with how you deploy applications on, on Kubernetes. Makes it really simple to to uh, close the gap in these two worlds. Uh, we at Red Hat run a lot of Jenkins, and one of the problems, for example, we run into is that how do we get the secrets uh, in the world of Kubernetes uh, as credentials in the world of Jenkins? Well, we have worked to solve that problem as well, but in take time, that problem is just simply not existent because have those objects you're running on Kubernetes, they're running a pod, those objects are directly available to your pipeline for consumption. So how does it work for um, applications? The take time is, uh, is fast, but uh, I, I'm not really after just pipelines on developing application and delivering applications. Is that useful for me? The way take time would help you in application delivery is uh, similar to any other pipeline, really, with the exception that you are completely native to Kubernetes. So you usually have the source code of your application uh, in the Git repo. 
Uh, every change in the repo would trigger a build pipeline that will build your application, create an image for your application, push it into a registry, possibly also modify configs for your application. This might be the Kubernetes manifest or the Helm chart or the customized file or other forms of deployment. You put it in another Git repo or the same repo. Uh, when you want to deploy your application to the environment, to your staging environment or production environment, then there is a, a, a different set of triggers. This might come from the Git repo, it might be manual or through the workflow system you have to trigger a different pipeline, a takedown pipeline that would take the image, take those manifests and deploy it to those Kubernetes cluster. This is a very common pattern for doing CI CD using um, takedown or other CI systems. Um, and there is no like intrinsic problem with that. It's just that it, it has, it fails to address some of the problems uh, that teams are facing today with having, for example, uh, more than a single cluster deployed to. So here, assuming that when I, I want to deploy my application to the staging cluster, that's one cluster that I'm deploying to. Many of teams today, they are running multi-cluster environments. So they have a staging environment on Azure. They might have one on AWS or EKS or um, OpenShift. Uh, so when you want to deploy, you have to deploy to multiple clusters uh, for a single environment. So how does it work with, with Tekton? Uh, you would uh, run the deploy pipeline multiple times, or within that, you can obviously uh, have a list of clusters that deploy the same application to it. Uh, this is a very common pattern. A lot of our teams do. Uh, the problem with that is that how do you know if one of those clusters fail to deploy? Like, let's say your staging environment is 10 clusters or 10 namespaces across different clusters, eight of them succeed, two of them fail. How do you do to bring the two clusters to, the, to have, the, have the deployment ready on those two clusters? You have to either rerun your deployment pipeline, so you have to redeploy to all the 10 clusters with 10 namespaces, or manually go figure out how to deploy on those two clusters. That, that's one of the issues that it's become difficult to add a, a, a workflow type of pipeline deploy to multiple clusters. It, 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 it leaves a lot to be wished for when, when you're using that process when things go wrong. Um, the second problem is that after you do the deployment, uh, let's say something changes on that cluster. Some admin manually goes to one of those staging environments and modifies the deployment. It uh, scales, they scale the, the, the pods up or uh, reconfigure the config map that the deployment is using. Our delivery is completely agnostic of this change. So with that change in one of the staging clusters, that staging cluster basically has a drift from the configuration that it should have in a product application. The application deployed in that staging environment is not really representing the state that it should have, but our process is completely oblivion to that and it doesn't know that this has happened. If you happen to know, if you have other monitoring system that can identify this, then uh, the way to correct it is, again, you have to go manually to fix that or run your deployment pipeline, deploy to all those clusters again and bring them, that, bring them back to a, a, a same a configuration that you have in your Git repository or image registry. This is, becomes a lot more rigorous if you are employing or incorporating GitOps practices in your flow. So you will have to rely on multiple tools, really, if you want to make sure that your clusters deviate from the, the configuration you have in Git. Um, at this flow, we call it the push flow because you're pushing to those clusters. And let's, let's look at Argo CD now, why we think Argo CD is a really good complement for this flow because it exactly addresses this, this challenges that the push flow had in delivering application to multiple clusters. What is Argo CD? Argo CD is a different GitOps operator that uh, helps you with continuous delivery on Kubernetes based on GitOps practices. So it essentially, it's a control that uh, looks at the desired state of your application in Git repo. So the way you want your application to look like that configuration file, the configuration repo that was, that was previously mentioned, you put that in Git repo. That could be Kubernetes manifest, or Helm chart, or customized, or, or other forms that you can describe your application for Kubernetes. Then Argo CD makes sure that this state is reflected on the live clusters. So it, it constantly syncs the state of the cluster to what you have in the Git repo. 
Then it doesn't step, it doesn't stop there. It keeps monitoring the state of the cluster and compares to what you have in Git. The most that it identifies that something does not match what what is stored in Git, then it would um, uh, it would uh, take action. It would notify you, or if you have configured it, it would automatically bring the cluster back to the state that you have uh, in Git. And this loop keeps uh, continuing. So it sits in the cluster and basically is policing that these configurations should not deviate from what is in Git. If, if anybody does that, it makes sure that it goes back to what it's supposed to do, or it tells someone to go back to what's happening, what is the state changing. And this, this fits really well on that last mile of the application delivery that we're talking about, and changes that push model to a full model. So the first part of the application delivery is the same. We have a taking pipeline that builds the application, pushes it, we create an image, push it to the repo, and the configuration, but instead of having that push model that a pipeline pushes the application to those clusters, you have the CD GitOps operator that sits those, those clusters and look at the Git repo that has the config and the image registry. Every time, anytime that that changes, it would identify it and automatically pull those and sync it to each other cluster. So uh, the slide is a little misleading. It's not a necessary a single um, uh, operator sitting there and syncing with all the cluster. There are other models that if I mentioned the uh, clusters that don't have access to internet, they don't have connectivity, uh, you might have this operator sitting in each of those Kubernetes cluster and just pull the application from the Git configuration and deploy them in the cluster. Uh, it, it makes sure that every sync is successful. If it, it is not successful, it repeats the sync or it notifies the admin. If somebody goes changing on the cluster, it does the same thing. So you have someone that's constantly watching the cluster, make sure that not only your application is deployed, but it's also deployed at all times with the configuration that you want within, uh, you have defined within the Git repo. So it, it really uh, does a well, real, real job at, at the last miles of the delivery in, in app delivery. And uh, it constantly does that. So it's not a one-time thing. Uh, there is no chance of deviating from what, what the application it was intended to be, the way that configured the application was intended to be configured on those clusters. Uh, so let me, in the remaining time, show you some of this uh, in uh, in practice. Uh, what I have is an OpenShift cluster right now that I have deployed the Spring uh, Pet Clinic application on it. That's the sample Spring Boot application. Uh, uh, it, it's the standard from uh, uh, from Git. Uh, I haven't made any changes to it. And, uh, I have a pipeline that uh, takes this application from Git and run a pipeline to deploy. Let's take a look at the repo of the application. I have cloned, I have forked it under my own repo to make sure that it doesn't make change as I'm running the demo. I have a fixed version that I can, uh, that I can demo with. Uh, it's a, like straight uh, forward Spring Boot application. I have the configuration for deployment of this application in my Git repo. Um, it's basically deploying a remote and service for this um, for this uh, application that is pulling the image of Spring Pit Clinic from uh, Quay and pushing the images to Quay for uh, for this demo. Uh, in for this particular demo, I'm using a separate uh, repo for the application source and config, but they might as well have been the same repo because in, in text and you have a brand more control on when you want your uh, change when your pipeline to be uh, to be triggered. So uh, this is the pipeline I have for uh, building and deploying the application uh, in the development environment within the the namespace that I'm showing you. Uh, it basically clones the code. Build a jar file image and deploy it right here. This name is paid run test. And if it's if the old test go green, then it would create a PR on the configuration repo, which my staging environment is connected to. So I'm looking at the dev development environment. I have an instance of Petunni. This is driven with my Tecton pipeline. Every change uh, results in new deployment within my deployment environment, within my development environment by Tecton. I have a staging environment that takes and doesn't reach. There is no pipeline associated with it. What I'm doing is that I have described the configuration of my staging environment in a, a branch called stage for the configuration of the app. I have Argo CD that is thinking this particular repo 
with that namespace on my application. If you look at the app details for Argo CD, there is, uh, I'm looking at the Git repo that has the configuration. Let me zoom in a little bit. If it's not visible, it refresh also. I have that act. Uh, Login back. So that's the Git repo we're looking at. I'm syncing the, the staging, um, uh, the stage branch with the uh, the demo stage namespace in my cluster. So Argo takes on and my development pipeline is doing nothing for my staging environment. Everything is driven through Argo CD. If something exists in the Spring Technology config repo under the staging branch, uh, Argo CD would sync that to the cluster and uh, it would notice that something is different. So what you're doing with our pipeline in developer uh, environment is that every time there is a change on Git, the pipeline gets triggered. Um, it builds the application, it builds the image, and if everything is successful, it creates a PR on this, the configuration Git repo for the staging environment with the image ID that was built uh, the particular tag that was built, and we can use Argo CD to sync it to a uh, staging, uh, staging environment. And this demo I have simplified, that I have a single namespace for my staging environment, but this might have been 10 different namespaces across 10 different clusters that all of them through Argo CD would be able to immediately sync. Uh, so let's go and make a change uh, application. Uh, I'll go add a little text on the uh, the first page of the Spring Get Clinic application so that we can see the change uh, after it's deployed. Go to the welcome page and the header Kickland plus RCD plus. Let's admit that, Git repo. So on this repo, I have a webhook that as soon as there was a change, this automatically uh, notifies my Kitlin pipeline to start building application. I look at the pipeline. I see that the pipeline started executing. Uh, it's the Java application spring uh, Linux is not that timely, so it would take a few minutes to run uh, through the build and run it. I'm catching the jar files, the, the Maven dependencies, so not the whole internet would won't get downloaded this time. But uh, it would take a few minutes still to check the that all the all the comms are latest and go through it. Um, and, and then the deploy the application in my uh, development environment. Let's let's wait till it, it goes through. In, if if you had the uh, if if I had chosen to use a single repo, uh, some of the teams uh, I, I talk to, some of the customers, I see that they prefer a single repo for application configuration, application source code. When you do that in take time, you can define exactly when uh, uh, the pipeline should be triggered. So you can customize this this webhook to only trigger the pipeline if. Uh, there is a git commit on that particular folder, uh, that particular set of files, and you can have a very fine grid control that uh, you don't rebuild your images every time the Kubernetes manifest, for example, are uh, have changed. Uh, that, that's one of the problems that many of the CI systems have, that uh, when you have monorepo, you keep rebuilding images even though there is no change in the source code of the application. And TikTok you can control that really well through expression. But everything that is in the payload, really, you can control that. Uh, while the build is going through, uh, let me show you some of the nice capabilities that there are uh, available for uh, for TikTok within OpenShift console. And we come back as the build when the build finishes. So I already showed you that I have a previous pipeline. Uh, I extracted to done this for me. What if you don't have a you want to start from scratch? So within Ship console, the console, there's a pipeline builder that uh, helps you uh, compose a pipeline based on the tasks that are available on the cluster. 
uh, you can install your own tasks, uh, take on task and use them for, for building pipeline. I would add a git clone task, enter the URL here. Let's uh, enter the pet cooling, for example, then add a Maven task to build an artifact for it. I might use uh, Mechanico or I'll build that to build a Docker image, uh, container image from it, and so on and so on. So I can use this to compose my pipeline. And uh, if uh, usually by the end of the day you want to tweak it really uh, a lot, and if you create it, you can always go back to come to YAML and if there are other applications that you want to do uh, on your pipeline. So let's see the build image. Let's see two uh, uh, two steps are completed. Uh, and this is a Python execute. You can just take a look at the logs of uh, the Python as well within the console. The image is almost built. It's being pushed into the registry of uh, of registry internal registry. Come on, and uh, almost done. There we go. Now my deployment should happen in my development environment. We see the new image that was built is being uh, deployed now, redeployed. And every time we rebuild it in this particular demo, we are tagging the image that is built with the commit ID of the event that comes from Git. So I, every, every change, every commit is being uh, turned into an image push it to the quay and get uh, deployed on uh, the open environment. I think Carpus might have been an answer uh, to, to use here. So I, have, I could have a little faster uh, startup. This one takes this, the pet makes takes about 30 seconds to connect. Go through that. And uh, in, in the configuration of all this happening, so in the config repo that I have, I have a similar uh, repo that has the configuration for my development environment. So uh, this is right now, Argo CD is not managing this one. My taking package is managing this one, but this might as well be in a, a, a repo that Argo CD looks at and, and controls. Okay, going back. Deployment finished, the tests are running, the integration test and performance test. These are like very quick tests. For the sake of the demo, I have shortened them. Uh, you normally don't get test results this quickly. Not even COVID tests can come back this quickly. Uh, the test was successful, fantastic. So we are happy with this change. We are ready to push this change to our staging environment. But because I have, I might have a large number of clusters that I need to push this change to. I'm not going to do it directly through a Tecton. I'm just going to create a PR through my pipeline on my, on the config repository. So if you look at it, there is a new pull request created. If I refresh, you should see it under the pull request as well. In this pull request, I'll take a look at the details of it. What has changed? The only thing that has changed here is that the image that is being deployed is automatically set to a new image that was just built um, uh, by, by my pipeline. So uh, if you look at the development environment now, our change should be here. Let's see, there we go. We have Tecton and Argo Rocks. If you look at our staging environment, nothing should be there because we haven't touch the staging environment, all we have done is that we have expressed that this is a good change. It can go to the staging environment. Our staging doesn't have that text yet. Now, let's take a look at Argo CD, see if Argo CD has uh, uh, no, understood. Argo CD right now is polling every couple of minutes, checks the, the state of the cluster. You could also have a webhook that every change asks Argo CD to, to check if things are in sync. Uh, for us not to wait, I'm going to do, um, uh, oh, wait, I, I missed that. So uh, Argo CD doesn't, doesn't identify any drift yet because nothing has changed on this repo. So all we have is a new PR that uh, is, uh, if, if we merge it, then we are asking our CD to deploy it into the staging environment. So I think this looks good. I added a good to me. 
on my own uh, comment, this would be this could be discussed across multiple teams. You might have chat ops hooked into this. Let's say all of that everyone agrees on deploying this change to the staging environment. I'm going to merge this pull request. All right. So now our staging environment, uh, the config in our staging environment is updated to reflect the image that we just built for our application. If I update the application, the change is not, it's not deployed, but our CD would figure out that the resources here are out of sync. It adds a little bit of icon between them that the deployment object has changed in the staging environment. I could have set this to automatically sync and bring my staging environment to the state of the Git. I'm not very comfortable with this automatic deployment, so I wanted to have a little bit of control. Uh, now I have investigated a change. I know this is the same change. I'm going to ask Argo CD to sync this change of configuration across all my clusters that are hooked up to this uh, Git repo. So syncing is going to happen. Uh, let's go to the staging environment. See a new deployment get, get triggered by Argo CD. Um, you can monitor the state of that within Argo CD as well. It shows the, the health of the object. So our service and routes are, uh, our, our service is healthy, it's uh, sync, our deployment is, is coming up. Wait a few seconds. And as soon as it's finished, we should see the new uh, the new text on our staging environment as well. Look at the logs of the, the pod is coming up. All right, clinic is up. Let's refresh our staging environment and there we go so the change is propagated to to the staging environment as well um so here here is the end of the demo and the, the way that argo cd is like uh, help us here is that uh, we can scale deployment to a large number of clusters across possibly multiple clouds or on-premise across multiple namespaces uh, with just a sync function you don't have to constantly rebuild images and run your pipeline uh, and uh, not be aware of how the deployment is going across those clusters. Uh, it can very granularly control each of the cluster and make sure that the application is pulled into those clusters for you. Uh, all right, Bert, this is the end of it. I think uh, I'm at the top of the hour also. Well, yeah, but we have a lot of questions for you, so let's spend some time digging into some of these things. We want to put you on the spot and make it hard, right? <laughs> Especially... Uh, Sounds great, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's one interesting question I'm seeing over here on uh, from a Twitch standpoint, and that is related to the. Let me make sure I say it correctly. Can we see exactly how the PR, right? So the GitHub PR pull request for the manifest change is created. Uh, so uh, within the Tecton uh, pipeline, I assume they mean. So we are using um, in the pipeline there is this last task. I'm using it so. Uh, in uh, Tecton, you get a, a, a large list of tasks uh, that are available within the community. Uh, we have Tecton Hub that helps you find a lot of these tasks. There's a task actually that you can sync with, uh, uh, with Argo CD as well. Uh, in addition to those tasks, you can create your own tasks. What I've done is that I'm using a task that is uh, built by one of our engineers and it's, not, it's being pushed to Tecton Hub. Uh, the task is called the image updater. So what it does is that it's a simple Go application that consumes the GitHub API to uh, make a PR um, based on just changing the, um, the image URL in a deployment. So I can say, uh, perhaps it's easier if I show you uh, in the pipeline how I'm using it instead of the actual uh, here it is. So this is the task. I don't know. I hope it's visible. The font okay. is large enough. Um, I can say which file uh, needs to get updated. Uh, what will be the image I want to deploy on which repo and so on. So this is uh, I'm using this, this particular task to create a PR. This is going to be soon on um, on Tecton Hub. 
Argo CD, interestingly, has a similar capability that you can uh, tag the application in Argo CD. This application is a CR also. We call it an OpenShift. Uh, you can annotate the CR with the uh, particular image URL, and it would automatically update in the deployment that this is managing. Right. No, I think that kind of addresses the point because where, you know, where do the magic PR tasks come from? So uh, that that's very cool. Now, a couple questions from Alexander, though, that I think are very important. We want to make sure we uh, describe them. And this kind of where you had to put on your product management hat. So does OpenShift pipelines based on Tecton replace Jenkins pipelines in OpenShift? Uh, they, uh, I think the replace might be the wrong word. It, if you, uh, Jenkins uh, pipeline exists in OpenShift and Tecton pipeline also through OpenShift pipeline, they both exist. They address different problems and, uh, and one is not really a replacement for the other. Jenkins is for the more traditional CI/CD and the existing pipelines that you have, so you can easily run them on Kubernetes on OpenShift and uh, have an easier time of syncing with OpenShift and your credentials and so on. Uh, Takedown is for people who don't want to manage a CI engine. If if you if you are tired of managing Jenkins and the whole plugins and all that system, then Takedown pipeline would be for you on on, on OpenShift. There is a place for both of them, as we see, but we see more and more people coming to our Tecton because of challenges of running Jenkins on, on Kubernetes. Yeah, managing that big Jenkins master for all the different right. worker processes. Okay, exactly. another question from Alexander, though, that I think is very important, and I even suggested that perhaps this might be where Tecton, Argo, and ACM come together. But the question is related to a multi-cluster environment. So I have dev, I have stage, I have test, I have UAT, I have prod, I got all that, right? Which a lot of people do. They have all these different clusters of OpenShift or Kubernetes out there. I want a central, do I need a central management cluster to run all these pipelines so that I can move my workload from dev to test to stage to UAT to prod? How does it, how does that being managed and what is, how's the state being managed? How do we know where it succeeded, where it failed, what the sequence of things are, things like that? Uh, so, so that's exactly what uh, Argo CD is best at to give you that that visibility into where things fail, right? Uh, for, there was a couple of things in this question. One is that if there should be a central like cluster for all this uh, the pipelines that are running, this is the kind of a decision that uh, the organization make differently. I see I work with teams that uh, they they really like to own their pipelines. So within the namespaces that they own their application and do, do development, they want to run their pipeline there so they have full control over it. I also see teams that they still have that mentality of central governance around pipelines and they want to have a single place that they can lock down what kind of images can get deployed or what kind of take down tasks can be can be used. So they go that way and limiting the access to the, the developed dev teams uh, of what they can do with those pipelines. So bo both of those exist. I can't say I recommend uh, one uh, or other, but for teams that are adopting more DevOps or GitOps principles, they are like inching toward those kind of practices. Having the pipeline very close to where you're, you have your development environments or development clusters, that, that might be a more sensible path for you. Um, visibility into where, where, what things fail and what things, like where, where things are successful, that's uh, in, in, in the case of when, when you are going toward DevOps practices, that's only meaningful for the team um, uh, for uh, for the uh, for for a particular team, only those pipelines matter that touch touches their application. So the grand view of where which pipelines are in general failing is not really useful for my team if I'm only uh, building the payroll application. So that that's uh, that question also uh, becomes uh, like less interesting when you're running decentralized. Um, and since all all those environments really like all all the all your pipeline do is that end up with your uh, correct state of your application in the Git repo, right? So from that point on, Argo CD would give you really that insight into all the applications and all the environments. So if they are healthy, if they are synced properly, which one of them have failed, which one of them have drift, and we need to act upon them, and so on. Okay. I think that definitely addresses the question, at least it does in my own mind, because a common question for Tecton is, how do I get alerting, centralized management, centralized monitoring? And, you know, because Jenkins had that, right? You know, centralized alerting, centralized management, centralized monitoring. And it's always been a little bit tricky on the Tecton side. Uh, what about integration with ACM, though? What, what, are you, what are you seeing from that perspective? 
so th this is an area that we are working with the ATM team and uh, to, to, be, to be able to have a, a much better integration that we have today. So th today, um, ACM does a, a swell job at provisioning the cluster and having insight into what they're what deployed on it and add policy, like make sure, for example, that Argo CD is deployed on this subset of clusters. The ATM does a fantastic job at that. And Argo CD does a fantastic job at state management to make sure that identified drift uh, if something deviates from what you have in, in your Git repo. Uh, so we're working with the ATM team to see how we can use more of the Argo CD functionality as part of the GitOps story in, in ACM and combine it with that policy management and uh, provisioning and cluster management that exists in ACM. Okay, a question about code-ready containers. Can you run all this on code-ready containers? Uh, so uh, you, if you have a huge laptop, uh, I would say yes. <laughs> so this doesn't a lot to code-ready container. If if you're running code-ready container, it means that you already have a giant laptop. Uh, then the answer is yes. That at running Tecton and Argo on that, it would be a tiny fraction uh, added to what you right. already have to run. Yep, yep, okay. And then uh, a question related to, now that we are kind of embracing Argo CD, you're showing us Argo CD, I did paste, uh, post the blog to the Argo CD blog that you just did in the Twitch chat, uh, but someone was asking there, what about the future of using Argo CD? What about thinking, how is this gonna be exposed inside of OpenShift? Are we gonna recreate that user interface? You know, Tell us more about what the future might look like from that perspective. Uh, so we are, uh, uh, first of all, we, we're going to be working in the Argo community, right? Like it's similar to any other project that we do, uh, Red Hat is always an upstream first. So we are we are, we are not going to have uh, an Argo CD that is different in features from the existing Argo CD or from the upstream Argo CD. That said, we will have a downstream product uh, version of Argo CD so that uh, customers of OpenShift can get support uh, from Red Hat uh, on issues of Argo CD. And there would be more like incrementally, we would bring elements of Argo CD dashboard into OpenShift console so that you can get uh, some insights about how uh, syncing of objects are going directly within the OpenShift console. And dashboard, of course, the uh, Argo CD dashboard would give you uh, significantly more details than what OpenShift console is, 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 is would give you. OpenShift console generally for us is a, a, a match of uh, different data about your application that relate to each other and make sense of them, uh, but it's not meant to replace all the other dashboards that exist and are more focused. The same applies to uh, Istio, Kiali, and, and, and other dashboard that exist. Okay, one last question. We'll put you on the spot one more time. Yeah, it was noted in the chat, and Christian actually, by the way, is on our chat on Twitch and helping answer some of these questions, but it's related to Flux. The Flux community decided not to go with the GitOps engine, uh, I haven't actually seen the news on this, but you know, the, has Flux moved away from Argo CD, and then what does that mean from the, you know, from our future perspective? Um, so that, that's exactly right. I think it was like the, during KubeCon that Flux uh, V2 session that uh, it was expressed that uh, the GitOps engine wouldn't be the path. Uh, so th that's essentially, like in my opinion, I, I'm not involved in the GitOps engine work, but I interpret that as the GitOps engine would not really ha have the same uh, intention that it was conceived to have. It was supposed to become the base of Argo CD and Flux and uh, other uh, GitOps operators. It is. It became the the base of Argo CD, uh, but it's the it's only within Argo CD, so I'm not sure it's adding much value. Uh, but what was very interesting is that Flux V2 is adding more and more uh, capabilities that are similar in Argo, uh, adopting some of those capabilities, being able to have multiple repository, being able to have a more like modular architecture for deployment, which means that essentially both are going in the right direction, right? They are going in the direction of converging capability, uh, but uh, not through the GitOps engine in particular, uh, but more in the concept and architecture. So there is still good collaboration, I would say, and exchange of ideas is happening between uh, two projects. Okay, well, thank you so much for that. I think that's actually very important. I believe we covered all the key questions that we have right now. And uh, and if you guys have more questions, feel free to hit CMAC on Twitter or myself. We can chase him down. You guys have my email address as well. I did provide the link to his Twitter handle so you guys can chase him up there. And that would be fun for you, right? Chase you down on social media to ask you more hard questions. I think that's a good thing for you. It's good for the soul. Absolutely. I'm looking forward to that.
<laughs> okay. Well, thank you so much for your time today. It was a lot of fun. I think you did a great job talking about a very hard topic, at least how to bring these two worlds together. Hopefully everyone feels that the question of how does Argo CD and Tekton CD come together, it was answered today. Uh, and you can always go back and check the recording. You have access to the recording at the URL you received earlier. So if you received the confirmation email, that URL, the one you're looking at, if the one you're looking at on Twitch, wherever you might be looking at it is the same URL. Do check that out. If you have further interest in other topics, feel free to send them to me on email. You guys, again, have my email address. But also look for the show next Tuesday. Tell your friends, neighbors, it'll be fun. We'll be there to harass Sebastian and give him a really hard time, right? So just be sure you're there to give him a really hard time. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much, CMAC. Thanks for having me. All right, we're out of here, signing off now.